myself say a salisasan associate professor chemistry from institute of technology and management gija gorakhpur the topic of this lecture is coal analysis i welcome you all for this session of coal analysis i hope some basic concept of fuel you must have studied in previous lecture in this lecture we will discuss the coal its introduction classification of coal proximate and ultimate analysis moisture content volatile matter content carbon hydrogen nitrogen oxygen and ash content in coal and significance of all these above parameters so this is the agenda of today's lecture now coal coal mining is the process of extracting coal from the ground coal is valued for its energy content and since the 1880s has been widely used to generate electricity steel and cement industries use coal as a fuel for extraction of iron from iron ore and for cement production coal is reg regarded as fossil fuel produced from large accumulation of veg vegetable debris due to partial decay and alteration by the action of heat and in at, pres at pressure over million of years coal is a highly carbonaceous matter that has been formed as a result of alteration of vegetable matters for example plants under certain favorable conditions it is chiefly composed of carbon hydrogen nitrogen and oxygen besides non combustible inorganic matter classification of coal coals are classified on the basis of their rank and rank is defined as the degree or extent of maturation and it's therefore a qualitative measure of carbon peat lignite subbituminous coals are referred as low rank coals and while bituminous and anthracite coals are regarded as high rank coal the lignite and the subbituminous coals are called as soft coal and bituminous and anthracite coals are called as hard coal so in the process the wood is first converted to peat then peat is converted to lignite and lignite is converted to bituminous and bituminous to converted to anthracite here we see peat is not a coal it is just the wooden part just changing into the coal at high pressure and heat then lignite is a brown coal bituminous is a soft coal and anthracite is a hard coal the qualities of peat the first stage of transformation it contains 40 to 50 percent and less carbon and contains sufficient volatile matter and a lot of moisture and it burns like wood and give very less heat emits more smoke and leaves a lot of ash that's why peat is the low rank coal lignite is a brown coal as shown in figure and it is a lower grade coal contains 40 to 55 percent carbon it is intermediate stage of transformation of coal moisture content is over 35 percent and it undergoes spontaneous combustion bituminous coal it is a soft quality of coal and mostly available and used as coal its name is derived from the term bitumen which is a liquid form of carbon it contains about 40 to 80% carbon moisture content and volatile content is 15 to 40% dense compact and is usually a black color it does have trace and original vegetable material in it calorific value is very high due to high pro proportion of carbon and low moisture and it is used in production of coke and gas 
the best quality coal is anthracite it con contains about 80 to 95 percent carbon it is hard quality of coal very little volatile matter is present negligibly small proportion of moisture semi metallic luster its shiny surface and it ignites slowly and less loss of heat and highly efficient it burns with blue flame the analysis of coal the coal analysis is carried out in two ways one is proximate analysis and other is ultimate analysis in proximate analysis a ready quality of rank of coal can be determined by just by estimation of moisture content volatile con vol matter content ash content and free carbon content and in ultimate analysis the exact percentage of carbon hydrogen nitrogen sulfur oxygen and ash content is carried out so determination of moisture for determination of moisture the known amount of coal is taken and it is heated in an oven at about 105 to 110 degree celsius for half an hour so that all the moisture is released in form of water vapor the loss in weight is estimated and by the using formula percent moisture is equal to loss of weight into 100 upon weight of coal taken we can calculate the moisture content then after volatile matter is cal calculated for volatile matter determination the amount of coal obtained from first stage after heating after removing uh, moisture content then it is heated in a furnace at about 925 degrees celsius for 7 minutes so that all the volatile, volatile matters are released and loss of weight is determined by cal calculation of loss of weight the volatile matter can be calculated using formula loss in weight into 100 upon weight of sample taken then ash content which is incombustible material after burning it is left behind so the material is uh, the coal is heated at about 700 degrees celsius for one and half hour and the remains the uh, left behind which are incombustible are um, uh, weight and ash content can be calculated by the formula weight of ash left into 100 upon amount of sample taken then fixed carbon percentage is calculated by subtracting the amount of moisture content ash content and volatile content by subtracting from 100 the ultimate analysis in which carbon hydrogen nitrogen oxygen and sulfur percentage are calculated first the process for calculation of carbon and hydrogen here we use the apparatus in which the amount of coal is burnt so that the carbon dioxide and steam is produced when carbon is burnt it changes to carbon dioxide and hydrogen is burnt it changes into a water molecule that mixture of carbon dioxide and water vapor is passed through this u tube in which in in one tube anhydrous calcium chloride is taken its known amount is taken in this u tube and in another chamber known amount of potassium hydroxide solution is taken when the mixture of carbon dioxide and water vapor is passed through these tubes and hydrous calcium chloride is a deliquescent substance it absorbs all the water molecule so that the weight of calcium chloride is increased and the carbon dioxide passes through potassium hydroxide here it reacts with potassium hydroxide so weight of potassium hydroxide is increased
one mole carbon reacts with oxygen to form carbon dioxide. So, from 12 gram of carbon, 44 gram of carbon dioxide is formed and from 2 grams of hydrogen, 18 gram of water is formed. Here is the reaction, potassium hydroxide reacts with carbon dioxide to form potassium carbonate and water and calcium chloride which is anhydrous, it absorbs 7 moles of water molecules. So, calcium chloride hydrated is formed. So, weight of potassium hydroxide is increased due to absorption of carbon dioxide and weight of calcium chloride is increased by absorption of water molecule and calculation of carbon and hydrogen from the expression. The increase in weight of potassium hydroxide in the tube into multiplied by 12, the quantity of 12 is carbon and multiplied by 100 divided by weight of cool sample taken into 44. The 44 is the molecular weight of carbon dioxide. Similarly, hydrogen percentage is calculated, the increase in weight of calcium chloride into 2 into 100 and divided by weight of coal sample taken into 18, where 18 is the molecular weight of water molecule. Now, estimation of nitrogen. The estimation of nitrogen is carried out by Geldahl method, in which the sample of the fuel, the coal sample is digested in concentrated sulfuric acid and potassium sulfate and copper sulfate. So, that all the nitrogen present in the coal is converted in into so, uh, ammonium sulfate. Then ammonium sulfate is treated with sodium hydroxide. So, that all the nitrogen present is converted into ammonia and that ammonia is passed through a standard solution of H2SO4. So, that some amount of H2SO4 is neutralized by ammonia and the left um, H2SO4 is then back titrated by sodium hydroxide standard solution and by this method the calculation of nitrogen is carried out. This is Geldahl flask called as Geldahl flask in which the fuel is taken the coal and copper sulphate H2SO4 and some amount of potassium sulphate is also taken and it is heated so that all the car uh, nitrogen is digested in this system. After digesting the nitrogen when converted into ammonium sulphate, the whole process is carried out. It is passed in H2SO4, then after titration we get the volume of acid used for neutralization of ammonia and we can calculate nitrogen as percentage volume of acid used into normality of the acid into 1.4 upon weight of coal taken. Then sulfur that is the determination of sulfur is carried out by combustion of sulfur when the coal sample is burnt all the sulfur is converted into sulfate. Then that system that solution is treated with barium, barium chloride solution. So, all the sulfate is converted into barium sulfate. Barium sulfate is a white insoluble substance then it is dried and weighed the amount of barium sulphate formed on the basis of the amount of barium sulphate formed that uh, estimation of sulphur can be determined by the formula percent sulphur is equal to weight of barium sulphate formed into 32 into 100 upon weight of coal sample taken in the bomb and multiplied by 233. The 32 is the atomic mass of sulphur and 233 is the molecular mass of barium sulphate. Then after ash content is calculated, the estimation of ash we have already discussed in uh, 
approximate analysis by same method we determine the ash content and then oxygen the percentage of oxygen is calculated percentage of oxygen can be calculated by subtracting percentage of carbon hydrogen sulfur and nitrogen from 100 so in this way we calculate the percentage of oxygen so in ultimate analysis the exact composition of a coal is estimated by calculation of carbon oxygen hydrogen sulfur and nitrogen so in this lecture we studied about the formation of coal various stages of coal that is peat lignite bituminous and anthracite the proximate analysis of coal in which moisture content volatile matter content and free carbon is calculated and in ultimate analysis of coal we calculate percentage of carbon hydrogen oxygen sulfur and nitrogen in this way we estimate the rank of coal there are some questions about the coal analysis thank you